So, yeah, that's why you have to react to this threat of bishop to g5. So probably the queen goes back, and you can see in both cases, white has a very dangerous kingside initiative. All right, so h4 was not bad, but Stockfish decided it may not be bad, but there's no need to sacrifice any pawns. We'll just go g3 and then play h4. It does cut off this rook lift with, having, with the pawn on g3, but still, the pawn goes to h4. And, and the point, by the way, so whether it's g3 and h4, or h4 right away, the point of this is twofold. So one idea, the one that was immediately relevant to what we're talking about, is to post up the knight on g5, and then the queen can maybe come to g4 or h5, and you immediately start creating threats against the black king. Or um, the other idea of h4 is to just go as far as this pawn will, will be permitted, h5, h6, and so on. And if black plays h6 at some point, then there's always at least the possibility that a sacrifice against this pawn can show up. So may not may not be possible in a given position, but it's at least one idea that's always lurking about. Another idea is to use the h-pawn as a hook for something like g4, g5. Again, this will be prepared. It won't just be played straight away, but it's it's looming. It's something that black always has to be on guard for. So g3 was played, queen c7, bishop f4, and uh, among other things, bishop to f4, Overprotects the e pawn in case white ever does take on c5. More likely, it also serves as prophylaxis against a move like f5 or f6 because of the discovered attack on the queen. So bishop to f4. One other idea uh, too is that um, if h6 shows up at some point, then the queen can come to to c1 or to d2, and white is lined up for the sacrifice. So bishop to f4. While at first glance you might wonder, well. What is the bishop doing on f4? It's just looking at the pawn on e5. Well, it does have some points. Okay, so after bishop to f4, black played rook a c8, h4, knight f8, which is something that black is probably going to have to do sooner or later. Black really wants to avoid pushing these pawns on the king side any more than he, than he has to, because any pawn he pushes is going to create a target. So knight f8 covers the h pawn. In some positions, he might be able to play knight to g6 to drive this bishop away. So, doesn't solve all his problems, but it's a sensible defensive move. Okay, white plays h5, and if permitted, he's going to play h6, and then if black goes g6, white's going to play bishop to g5, or maybe queen to d2 first, trade off the dark squared bishops, and try to wiggle the queen in to the g7 square for mate. Of course, it's not going to be that easy, but... That's one of the plans. Another idea will be to go knight h2. Let me get rid of all this stuff. So pawn on h6, pawn on g6, trade the bishops, and then if you can't get the queen to f6, another piece that can go there very happily would be the knight. So that is going to be extremely dangerous for black as well. So after h5, he plays h6. But now he has to worry about the sack possibility. So indeed, White plays queen to c1. And, okay, for, for engines, there's there's no worry about being subtle or, or obvious. For humans, <laughs> you see the queen on c1, there, there's no question about what white has in mind here. All right, black plays queen to d7, creating some possible mischief along the, uh, the c file. So white gets the queen out of the way of any of those tricks before they happen. Now black plays bishop to, to c4. So he's finally found a way to make some progress. So knight b to d2, and now at long last, c takes d4 happens. So this should have happened 10 moves or so ago, but better late than never. Uh, white doesn't want to play cd. He plays knight takes d4, knight d4, and now though there's no choice because queen takes d4, loses the queen on the spot to bishop c5. So c takes d4 is necessary. Now black pulls the bishop back out, reopening the c file, White plays knight to f3, and black plays b5. Trying to open up lines again. This is this is what black must do, because sooner or later, white is going to bust through on the king side, if nothing else. So if white just gets all the moves that he wants to, to make preparations to play king h2, rook to g1, move the bishop, maybe double rooks on the g file, and go g4, g5. 
and black is going to perish. There's there's no way that black can just play defensively on the king side and ultimately hold out against that kind of attacking scheme. So b5 is necessary. He's trying very hard to open up lines. Now, here white has two promising looking options, and the engine, as far as I can tell, chose the right one. Um, I mean, of course, you expect that if the engine played it, it's probably the right one. But I mean, I analyzed it deeply enough because sometimes something can be promising, but the payoff is far enough in the future that the engine takes, uh, it takes a while before it's persuaded that a certain idea is correct. But um, here it seems that one of the ideas, even analyzed very deeply, well, extremely dangerous, is not quite winning. So I will first tell you what the two, two moves are if you haven't figured it out already. So one of the moves here, let me get rid of all this stuff. One of the moves is to play g4 with the idea of g5. And the other one is, of course, what's been looming for, for a while now. Bishop takes h6. So you might want to, again, if you're feeling ambitious, you might want to try to figure out which is better. Here is the move that's not better, g4. It's very dangerous, but I think black is just holding on here. So here's how this works. B takes a4, g5, takes, takes, rook to b8. Not so much because of the b pawn, but because rook to b3 exerts some rather annoying tactical pressure along the third rank. So from here, white goes bishop to f6. So there's a nice spectacular move for you. And what does black do here? So this is a, a critical position where black has a lot of options and all of them but one lose pretty, pretty directly. Okay, let's start with a really kind of dumb move. Rook takes b2. Ignoring it, we're going to grab a useless pawn. Well, queen of g5 is, is just the end. If you play g6, then queen h6, probably just h takes g6, is, uh, is devastating as well. But queen h6 and then queen g7 mate can't be stopped. Bishop f6, ef6, and queen g7 mate. So that, of course, is uh, completely pointless. Another move that fails, but at least has more of a point, is g takes f6. So we go queen h6, threatening to take. So f5, and now king h1. So that nasty little move puts an end to uh, black's resistance. So rook to g1 is coming, and there's no, no sensible defense. Knight h7, check, here, mate. Okay, so g takes f6 is the loser. If knight h7, the way we beat this is like this. We take, we give check, and now queen to g3 may not be the only move, but it's, it's a nice move. It's a little bit, a little bit subtle and quiet. Bishop f8, h6, and uh, if g takes, well, everything is winning. Probably the easiest is just knight to e4, followed by knight takes f6 when you're attacking the queen and threatening queen to g8 mate. Uh, Okay, well, actually, one little finesse here. So knight e4, king h8, knight, h, uh, knight f6, bishop h6. And the idea is that if knight d7, at least there's rook to g8, but queen to h4 puts an end to the, uh, to the fun. So that one's winning. And after h6, if, um, if g6, well, h7 is mate. So no, no uh, sensible defense there. Okay, one more try that doesn't succeed. Bishop takes f6. This is a better try, but still not really going to work. Queen g5 is the threat. And if um, gf, then queen h6. Rook b2, and once again, king h1, followed by rook to g1, is a killer. So, no defensive success there for black. The one thing that black can do, however, is go queen to d8. This seems to save the day. Um, and it's still scary, but black survives. So we go bishop g7, king g7 is forced, queen f4, it's a good move. Now knight to g6, takes, takes, queen g4, simply threatening this, rook h8, queen g6, king f8, and now rook to g8 is a threat. So we drop back to g4, rook here, bishop here, and... Probably forgot about this guy, but 
all of a sudden this piece plays an important role. So check. Now if the king moves, then this followed by that is made, queen f7 and queen h7. So after queen f4, bishop f5 is forced. But now it's illegal, of course. Whoops. Well, that's definitely illegal, but it's illegal also to play bishop takes f5 for different reasons. So white has nothing better than to give perpetual like this. So that's why g4, while extremely dangerous, does not win. So the right move is bishop takes h6. So takes, queen takes, queen of d8, stopping knight to g5. And now g4. So it's surprising. It's, uh, it's a little bit of a slow approach, 